Hey guys, I'm back and uh, this is uh, this is the valve. I got it all connected back up to the tracer attachment. Um, don't mind the mess. I got oil all over the floor. <coughs> this is actually the tracer attachment. And, um, you know, it goes back and forth. It mounts on, on I'm on the back side of the lathe here. Here's the hose goes into the pump I got to put all this back together um, and the way it works I'm gonna come around to the, to the front side of the lathe um, see uh, these blocks here are a job I have to do for a customer that lives right down the road they're actually these these rosettes I mean they're wood they're rosettes for a um, for a house, see the guy's restoring an old farmhouse down the road. He needs about a hundred of these, and um, you know uh, that's why I wanted to get this thing going because I could just trace. I could trace along this profile here, and and run these on the uh, on the four jaw chuck. I don't have a large four jaw chuck for this lathe. This is a twenty inch swing lathe, but I have a small one. And that's going to do fine on, on this. Um, um, so what I did is I chucked up the small four jaw and the, and the three jaw. And uh, we'll run them that way. Um, so anyway, to make a long story short, it's working. Um, when you flip, I have a switch right down here on the lathe. You flip that and you can hear the pump running. And there's a little air valve here. You flip that and it starts feeding forward. Now this stylus typically would run along a pattern. So when you when you push this stylus as it's running along, see that this is where you would set up your pattern. You can do um, X X patterns or Y patterns. Right now it's set up for a Y pattern to run this way, but uh, to do the other one, I'm going to have an X pattern running set up this way and so I'll be feeding my uh, my cross slide in and as I feed my cross slide in um, it'll follow it'll follow the pattern going in the X direction now if I was using the carriage uh, let's say if I had to for instance a cannon or a baseball bat or something to that effect it would run along the Y you know um, but this was a real pain in the butt I mean I was really bummed out because I, I paid like I forget I know it was under four hundred dollars for this tracer attachment which I thought was a great deal at the time and it was working good you know it seemed to be in good shape didn't have a real lot of hours but I guess just from sitting in the humidity um, in that previous video there the um, see when you flip it off it automatically goes back to the retract position and um, I mean, it's a nice setup. Um, what was I going to say? You know, it's hard to find a tracer attachment, and to find one for a lathe that's this big um, was even harder. And I just happened to luck on it on Craigslist. I bought this almost two or three years ago, and I never really used it. Um, you know, because I moved down here to Tennessee from Connecticut, and... Uh, you know, I just, I had it set up. I had it working the, the way you just saw here, kind of manually operating it. But there was, you know, a lot to be desired for the pattern trace. I had to make some custom pieces here. There were no hold downs. I made all these hold downs. The pattern kind of goes in, in here this way, you know, and then you hold it down with this. And then the uh, stylus kind of, you know, follows it this way here. You know, um, so I'm happy. I'm a really happy man. I, actually, you know, I got about uh, 10 hours in trying to figure out what was wrong with this valve. Um, they want $1,500 for a brand new one. I paid $400 for the for the whole setup, and I wasn't about to spend $1,500. Number one, you know, um, I ain't got that kind of money, and number two. Uh, I probably would have just put it up on eBay for parts because uh, I really don't have the money to to be upgrading this thing. And uh, so that's the story. Thanks for watching. Bye.